Uh um. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me make sure you can hear me. Um. Okay, I'll take that away. Yes, there we go. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome, one and all. <clears throat> um. Hmm. Let me see who's here first. Lorna Williams, thank you so much for being here first. And thank you for being a member. All right. And Mary H is here, Benny Blair. Okay. I'm not going to do my uh, long, long intro because I am starting even later than I really wanted to. But anyway, we're here. Um, Dan Speed, I keep forgetting you got a channel. Is that right? I keep forgetting about that. It has been such an insanely busy um, month. I hope you can forgive me. Or a couple months, really. Oh, I see um, Duchess of Advocacy was on earlier. Okay, very good. Let me do this. I'm going to... I got to open up another screen anyway so I can see what you all are seeing. There we go. Turn that volume down. Oh, it's a new channel. Okay, I just noticed that. Is there a lot of cussing? I like cussing. <laughs> I like cussing. Uh, okay. Oh, nice. Very nice. I'm loving it. It's like McDonald's. I'm loving it. So far, I like what I see. Mm, very nice. Very nice. Oh, and I love the um, the photo you have for the that landscape uh, wide photo. Love that one. That is beautiful. I can't wait to check it out. Oh, wait a minute! I'm subscribed already. Ah, uh, okay. So it's new, but it's not new, new. Okay. Um. All right. Very good. Congratulations, and thank you for creating yet another safe space. For our faves, love safe, uh, safe spaces. I was about to say safe spaces. <laughs> I love safe spaces. And I also, I love Lydia Washington and Love Wins Movement and Amber Rowan. I love Novi D, Carlita Simone, B. Martim. I just love everybody. Everybody loves somebody sometime. Wait, no. Everybody needs somebody. Is it need somebody? Anyway, <clears throat> I know this is hard to believe, but one of my favorite singers is none other than Dean Martin. I didn't realize that he was such a great singer until I got older and my taste in music became more refined. That guy can really sing. Um, Sussex Global UK. Hello, Ivy here. <laughs> Hi, Ivy. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, let's see. Leslie F is here. All uh, right. And uh, Marion Gums is here. Okay. Very cool. Nice. And uh, let me see who else. Okay, let me stop. I sound like Romper Room. I see Billy. I see Susan. Did you guys ever watch Romper Room? How, be, how come when she would look in that mirror and she talk about all the kids she see, how come there wasn't no Shaquandas or um, Tremikas or La Shatra? You know, you know how we used to do it. You had to throw that little la or sa or tra, you know, like Trayvon or 
Lashon, that kind of thing. Yep, I tell you, <clears throat> with the um, Black Pride movement came a whole lot of extra syllables. La, sha, and tra. <laughs> And if you are a lush uh, a tra, um, I apologize in advance. How come people can't have just just beautiful traditional names like Ozell? I love Ozell, or or VIP lady. I'm not sure what that means, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. But okay. VIP lady. Interesting. Um, or how about uh, Gwendolyn, right? Just traditional names that um, I know they, they're too Eurocentric. I get it. But uh, that's what we're used to. Um, and who else is here? Brenda. See there? Sharon. <laughs> anyway, to the lush uh, trust out there, um, I, I'm sending a shout out. Much love to the lush uh, trust. Okay, let me let me get in here before I end up having um, the NAACP or some other movement outside my house marching with um, banners and such. Hello, Sonia Johnson. Or duh and Vaughn something. <laughs> like Von Dale. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get in trouble. Let me stop. Let me stop. Okay, let me get my slides up. Uh, okay. All right, there we go. Slides are coming up. Hey, Black Queen. Hi, uh, Joy Amore. Okay. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Excellent. All right. Kate Middleton, Uncle Gary. Oh, I didn't put apostrophe there. Apostrophe S. I didn't plural that, did I? I mean, take ownership, whatever. But um, anyway, Kate Middleton's Uncle Gary Goldsmith blasts Meghan Markle. I wrote that deliberately like one of those tabloids. You know, they're always blasting somebody. Well, he proved himself once again to be a clown. But where are the clowns? There ought to be clowns. Oh, by the way, you guys, proud Royal Sussex member, Geraldine White has been a member of Royal Sussex for 23 months. 23 months. Now, uh, unfortunately, Jerry is still convalescing right now and unable to um, join us in the chat. And so she always hears me say, oh, so-and-so has had a membership for 20 months or 18 months or 13 months. And unfortunately, she hasn't been able to participate because she hasn't been able to join us in the chat. So I decided to create this slide just for Jerry, who, by the way, appreciates your continued prayers while she's uh, recuperating. And uh, anyway, once again, proud Royal Sussex member Geraldine White has joined uh, 23 months ago. So uh, let me give her a round of applause. Well, where is my applause? There we go. <laughs> Outstanding. Okay, thank you again, 
uh, Jerry White. And thank you, everyone who has a membership with Royal Sussex. Oh, that was nice and deep that time. I sound like I'm going through the change. <laughs> uh, I'm in a silly mood. Don't pay me any attention. I'm in a very silly mood. Okay. Um, hmm. There we go. Uh, thank you, B. Martim. Says congratulations for Jerry, Joy Amore, Brenda Crane, Dansby. Oh, Love Wins Movement. Thank you all very much, everyone. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, old Sexy James says, may God bless Geraldine White's recovery. Thank you so much. And let me see, who else? Oh, Mary H. wants to say hi to a few people. Uh, Leslie F., uh, let me see. Baron, you forgot Sha Shaquisha, Shalandra. <laughs> and if, of course, Shanene, yes, and, of course, Shanene. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I love it. <clears throat> and I'm getting too old to be doing that because, you know, these kids, these kids, they like they were when I was younger. They're not as respectful. And, you know, I'm getting too old and I don't want to get the beat down because these kids, they just, you know, they don't take things. They don't have that type of um, sense of uh, humor. <laughs> They may not find it as humorous. So, yeah, I have to be very careful. All right, uh, let's continue. Now, you, we all remember this very iconic image of Princess Diana in India at the Taj Mahal. And unfortunately, even though there was a promise from Charles when he was the Prince of Wales, uh, Charles, promised that he would take her there one day. But, of course, he never did because he was too busy running around pretending to be a hygiene product. So uh, she went to India and actually sat there on the bench by herself in front of, well, what is considered one of the most romantic gestures ever created, the Taj Mahal, which um, is a temple, a tomb, a monument of love for a ruler and his wife. So you can see the connection. I hope I got that right. Anyway, um, the beautiful Taj Mahal, one of a kind, beautiful architecture. So um, she was there by herself and, you know, that uh, made for quite a sight. And it was a reminder to everybody that Charles Philip Arthur George Mountbatten Windsor ain't S I T. Yeah, S H I T. Yeah, that's it. Ain't S H I T. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me see. Oh, let's see. Lydia Washington says, while sharing prayer requests, please also remember Cynthia Thorpe as well as she confronts a serious health challenge. Yes. Prayers out for Cynthia Thorpe, who is still continuing with a serious health uh, challenge. So definitely, please make sure you all send your prayers out for her. Thank you so much, Lydia Washington. And thank you for everyone who's listening, even if you are not able to contribute in the chats. If you're not able to hit the like button or anything, thanks for being a part of this community. And thanks for sharing with us. Greatly appreciate it. Okay. And then there's this. I did not catch that the first time around because 
Well, I was too busy seeing another iconic uh, situation. I kind of felt like they were trying to channel the very Renaissance image of Christ, which I'm still going to say that I feel like that's exactly what it was meant to convey. However, it, uh, two things could be true at the same time. So perhaps they were trying to also borrow from the trip to the Taj Mahal. I say both are likely accurate. Okay. And then, of course, since we're on the topic of benches, let me just remind you guys that Harry sat on a bench in a very location where his mother helped to diffuse landmines with the Halo Trust Organization. And as we all know, the bench has been part of, well, the Sussex brand for a while, mostly Megan, of course. And then, of course, the benches that were used at the Invictus Games. It is not a very typical scene for other parts of that family. However, I feel that they have tried to hijack that uh, imagery for their own twisted purposes to try to take that away from them. Also, there are some benches that are under so much pressure that if you sneeze, it'll turn into a pile of toothpicks. <laughs> there are some benches that are not actually just a straight slab of wood. They have developed into a smile if you understand what I'm saying. That bench is under more pressure. My rear tires have less pressure than what that bench is going through right now. That bench is probably the eighth wonder of the world because I'm wondering what's holding it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that bench has to withstand all the pressure. You know how they say that when it's humid, wood expands, and when uh, it's uh, dry, it contracts. Well, just imagine, under the pressure <laughs> that that bench is going through with Robert Jobson firmly planted upon it, just imagine how those planks of wood are expanding and contracting right along with his behind. Every time he takes a breath, he's on the verge of disaster. So <laughs> it would be fun, though, to see that camera go flying off his head. And, of course, um, Arthur uh, Edwards would go tumbling down with him and all of that. That would be so much fun. I mean, the camera would probably hang in midair for a couple of seconds. <laughs> his glasses go flying. I'm not wishing nothing bad on anybody, but then again, somebody must have wished something bad on that bench because look at what it's going through. Poe bench. <laughs> I mean, listen, listen. Shh, shh, shh. Can you guys hear it? Do you hear the wood splintering right now? Yeah, the wood, that's that's not me. That's the wood splintering. <laughs> I've never seen a wooden plank with a smile before or turn into a smile, but... Uh... <laughs> Uh, Black Queen said, did you see the disappearing ring? Check out. Uh, yes, I did see the disappearing uh, ring. Um, actually, I watched it a couple times. And yes, it seems as though it vanished. The ring literally vanished. It did. It did. That's not made up. That is not made up. That ring vanished. There are so many problems with that video. And I keep asking myself, why, oh, why do they keep doing this? Why are they doing this? Why are they deliberately 
challenging people to identify these rather bizarre images. I don't understand why that's happening, but yet they keep doing it because they are likely distracting from something much bigger. Speaking of which, let me get Robert Jobson off the screen. Uh, but they are likely distracting from something much bigger. Now, the Philadelphia Inquirer says, don't blame stupid people on the internet for palaces, Princess Kate lies. Um, and of course, I don't believe they're saying that we're stupid. They're saying don't blame. Well, that's quoting them, stupid people on the internet. Don't blame stupid people on the internet. And that's the excuse that the palace is using is that there are stupid people on the internet is the reason why they're going through these troubles right now. No, it is actually the stupid people within Kensington Palace. Elite columnists jump on the masses for Princess Kate's speculation before her cancer announcement, but blame the palace for its lies. Blame the palace for its lies, which is what I was saying for some time, is that I cannot feel guilty for anything that has been said because the reason why we are here is because of the very, very shady or clumsy actions, or both, of Kensington Palace. This rollout has been a disaster. Now, there is such a, a there's such a big space, a big void in between how the uh, Charles and Camilla's people handled things and how Kensington Palace, which is um, Will and Kate, the way their, their people handled things. Now, the one part where Charles um, didn't do so well is that he won't disclose what kind of ca uh, cancer he has. But I believe that is likely strategic so that his nutty, crazy son won't try to um, become a regent or something like that. But, but everything else that Buckingham Palace, everything else that they have done has been picture perfect. They have not gotten any of this wrong. They, um, Camilla has actually, ha I think she's had more engagements than William, hasn't she? Or maybe it just seems that way. I don't know. But um, Camilla has been very visible. She's been taking the lead, which is actually what William was supposed to do. Also, um, she hasn't declared herself taking off for the next few months because her spouse is ill. She's actually working in spite of it, which is right out of the uh, Elizabeth and Philip playbook, right? So they are doing everything that they're supposed to do. Can't believe I'm sitting here giving them credit, but they have. They've done everything they're supposed to do, and nobody's had any complaints, and there hasn't been any conspiracies where Charles is concerned when they said that he expired when they said that whatever that bridge collapsed um you know they have a different bridge for his code when he passes but um some bridge in in wells they um put out a statement immediately they didn't put an ai video out they didn't go get a body double and that's good because i don't know too many men that have childbearing hips so um, but they didn't try to put out a body double. <laughs> Do you like the way I worked that in there? I don't know too many men that have childbearing hips. <laughs> Thank you. But um, or hands like catcher's mitts or ears like satellite dishes. Shall I go on? But uh anyway, uh <clears throat> they um they did not, uh, what do you call it? They, they didn't falter at all. They, they kept the, the ship of state sailing right through the storm. However, 
William seems to have an identity crisis. He doesn't know whether he's sick or whether it's his wife that's supposed to be ill because it seems like every time she makes a move, he makes a move. She disappears, he disappears, or at least he tries. She's not doing any engagements. Well, he tried to not do any until he got shamed out of it. But yeah, it's it's a lesson of contradictions when it comes to William. Uh, Carolita Simone, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for being here on Royal Sussex. Thank you very much. But yeah, so as much as I hate to say it, uh, Buckingham Palace has been doing everything right. But Kensington Palace, I don't know. How. It just, to me, it feels like they're trying to provoke people into some type of big confrontation over the idea of privacy, um, bullying, pretty much all the stuff that people have accused them of having done to Harry and Meghan. Isn't it just so odd that now they're the ones uh, that are crying foul? Isn't it odd? I mean, you could not make this up. It seems like we're we're uh, like we're in a step through the looking glass, as they say. But it is true. They seem to have um, decided to call themselves victims, if you will and accuse people of bullying them. And of course, the most ironic thing, we want, our, we want our privacy. We want privacy, right? That trope, what they accuse the Sussexes of. So uh, in that article uh, from the Philadelphia Inquirer, it says the background birds had barely stopped chirping in the dramatic Friday video from Catherine that's interesting because I don't know that there were any birds. Uh, the Princess of Wales revealing her cancer diagnosis and ongoing chemotherapy when the rush to judgment took full flight. The elite columnist at the New York Times, the powerful news organization that watched its authority erode in the internet age, often uh, from self-inflicted wounds, Really? Is this like a conservative paper? Uh, we're almost gleeful despite the downbeat medical news in pointing out the finger of blame for months of increasingly feverish online speculation on the whereabouts of Princess Kate. Missing in action since Christmas the um, villain in their version of the Times 2006 Person of the Year, you, the royal uh, scandal is us, blares the Times headline over the lead column from book critic, cultural um, something, Pamela Paul. Uh, oh, scolds uh, Pamela Paul who said the real reason for the frenzy that escalated when the doctored or worse photo of Kate Middleton and her three children was handed out to the press, it uh, is that America's, Americans should stop hounding public figures when they deserve privacy, she wrote. Again, how ironic. Kate's terrible news should have just uh, makes a, um, shouldn't just make us feel terrible for Kate. It should also make us feel terrible about ourselves. Not. Anyway, I think they're just going through the whole revision of that. But it just goes to show you some of the headlines that are out there. Also, I do have another to share with you. Let me find that one. This one right here, the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, let me check that one out. Is this one it? Oh, no, I don't have that one. Wait a minute. Which one was I just looking at? Oh, that was it. So what the heck was that other one? Oh, same thing. Oh, that's what I was reading right there. Okay. 
All right, never mind. That's what I was just referencing right there. I was reading it from another place. Uh, uh, Jeanette Ambersley says, AI video, because she has probably lost her hair, I am sure that is why the pic was doctored, still deceiving, but my cousin lost her hair quickly. Thank you so much for that, uh, Jeanette. Um, well, okay, so there was definitely a time when people lost their hair and it seemed like it was almost overnight. But nowadays, I have seen people go through treatment that have not suffered the type of hair loss uh, that we have seen in the past, right? And so it is possible that Kate was very ill in the fall. Whether or not it was cancer, I'm not sure. There are a lot of things that can cause hair loss, stress, malnutrition, um, various things can cause hair loss. And so if she was not diagnosed until after the 17th of January, the one thing we know for sure is that Kate was wearing wigs and well, I believe she started off with the hair extensions. And then by fall, she graduated to some very monstrous wigs. And they were they were really bad. They just looked very, very wiggy. They were sitting up and riding very high. It um I I you you just know it was a wig. So there are people that have speculated that Kate may have actually have known of, about her illness for quite some time. I am not ready to say 100% Kate does not have cancer. And because of the lies, I also feel like, ugh, who would lie about something like that? But can I trust what they're saying? Because we have been deceived multiple times. And that's the problem with lies is that when it comes down to it, there's always going to be doubt. They have sown the seeds of doubt and they are making myself and countless other people doubt everything that is said. And that is the unfortunate part. When you lie, it causes a lot of stress. You got to remember what you lied about. And you got to remember the lie that you told to cover for the other lie. And in this instance, there is a timeline that has been established by the headlines that have been fed to us by people that work as a mouthpiece, as the spokesperson or persons for Kensington Palace. And these people have said on numerous occasions, as a matter of fact, I'm going to share one of those with you later, but these people have said on numerous occasions that they are able to call Kensington Palace. Even Omid Scobie said that he was able to call Kensington Palace for comment. And so a lot of those headlines that you see, while they may be salacious and sensational, they are actually not exactly word for word, but they are the words from Kensington Palace. They are feeding directly into the tabloid media, and they are giving it their own spin. And usually that spin is, Will and Kate good, Harry and Meghan bad. Will and Kate good, Harry and Meghan bad. I mean, isn't that the way it always goes? That is the usual line of the day. That is their mantra. Will and Kate, good. Harry and Megan, bad. They're, they are really a one-note Johnny, aren't they? Um, so I believe certain headlines are absolutely true and accurate. I believe the content of the story comes directly from Kensington Palace. And especially since we are supposed to believe every bad thing they say about Harry and Meghan, 
why wouldn't I believe the everyday thing that they say about Will and Kate? Because they want us to believe the terrible stuff, then I am just going to volunteer to believe everything they say about Will and Kate, right? Well, selectively. I mean, if it doesn't make sense, obviously I'm not going to go by that. But um, that is that is the the bed that they have made for themselves. So if you make your bed, you have to lie in it. Nobody else is going to sleep in your bed. So yeah, that is that is the nightmare that they made for themselves. If she is ill, I wish her well. Um, I hope the best for her children, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, there is a game of deception. Aaron, you're so right. I I am not a conspiracy person, but right now I'm just at a loss. Exactly. That this is what they're doing to us. And you see, this can be very, very dangerous. During the global pandemic, there was a lot of conflicting statements that was coming from the president of the United States. And because of that, a lot of people that voted for him decided, well, I'm not going to cover my mouth. I'm not covering my mouth. My breath is supposed to exhale. I can't breathe that in. That's the best waste. And, you know, and I, the whole time I kept saying, if the simplest thing that you can do is just cover your mouth. And if we all do that, it will prevent, limit, or even stop people from getting sick. But people were so defiant and they listened to this conflicting information. You know, damn the medical professionals. They listened to this conflicting information. They even found medical professionals who would use the party line. Ignoring the fact that there were a lot of people within that group that believed that, you know, selective el elimination was okay. Old, frail, sick, you're not supposed to be here. That was their mentality. Life is for the strong and the young and the vigorous or whoever can withstand this terrible thing. And so after a while, nobody knew who to believe. And a lot of people are not here anymore because of the deliberate misinformation. But one thing is for sure. I could I I didn't trust the orange menace to begin with. I I couldn't trust them later. And I remember someone got upset because Kamala Harris said if the vaccine comes from him, if he has something to do with it, I'm not taking it. Remember she said that? And a lot of people thought, "Oh, that was reckless and irresponsible." But I understood why she said what she said and I pretty much felt the same way after all of the misinformation that the president was putting out there, like uh, drinking uh, disinfectants and, and putting light bulbs inside of people's bodies. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't help but laugh. It got to the point where I just couldn't believe anything anymore. And, you know, I said, you know what? I'm just going to wear my mask and be done with it. So this, and I'm sorry for the very long about uh, long way I took to get to my point, but this is the reason why people do not believe them. And now you have people on TikTok right now picking apart that video. And if you haven't heard any of it, I did share what I what I could share yesterday, but I didn't share a video. Well, I did share that one video of Megan, you know, that was doctored. But otherwise, it's scary stuff. It really does. This is the first time, because, you know, people have been preaching you know, AI is going to ruin everything. AI is going to be the death of us. AI, AI, AI. 
everybody's been saying that AI is going to be a nightmare. Now it's here. And of all people, the conduit from which we are witnessing this, of all people, Kate Middleton or whoever or whatever that is, that is supposed to be sitting on that bench right now. I mean, I've watched those videos today. You all watched it. Scary stuff. It is really scary. Uh, thank you, Love Wins Movement. It is scary. Uh, now, you know, and before I was just like, oh, people are overreacting. Try not to worry about it. Well, it's here. Now, still, for now, most of us will not be affected by this technology, but we do need to be aware of it. So I don't want you to walk away in fear uh, because of, you know, something new. But the truth is we do need to be aware of this. And they were saying that uh, during presidential elections or if there was a national emergency of some sort that someone in government could um, leak a video that could cause panic and confusion. You know what I'm saying? So it's not us as individuals that are likely to be affected by this. It is the idea that there could be a government or a leader of some sort that uses this technology against the people. That is, that is what you should be afraid of. But for us, the individual, I don't think it's going to have much of an effect on our day to day. But the technology is there and, and we all are witnessing that it will cause doubt and confusion. So what I'm trying to say is, if that is Kate Middleton, um, we still have a problem because now that we know about the technology, at the very least, it is causing us to have doubts about the validity of that video. So that is problematic. No matter how you slice it, that's a problem. And it's too bad because it should not involve um, the royal family, but that this is where we are right now. So again, uh, for the most part, you guys should not worry about this directly affecting you uh, from day to day. But there is the um, capability there that someone in a high place will use it against us. Like, I don't know, Donald Trump. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so I see some prayers. What is going on here? Um, is it Ann Gromley? Is that what I'm looking at? I'm scrolling back. I'm trying to take a look. Okay. Oh, I'm not able to go back any further than that. Well, whatever it is, uh, I think it's Ann Gromley. I wish you the best. Oh, you've been watching. Uh, I've heard Hugo talk about uh, this a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's coming, y'all. It is coming. It is coming. Okay. Let us get on with it because we got some slides to cover. I... Um, what really took so long is that I have been, I, I walked into that rabbit hole. I have been listening to people discussing this all day. Uh, Baron, I do not believe anything these people say. I still wear my mask. So, uh, South Korea lost 500 people because they were, they wore masks. Uh, they lost 500 people beca because they wore masks. We lost over uh, a million because of stupidity. Oh, I get what you're saying. They had a limited amount of loss because they were wearing their mask, whereas we lost over a million people. Exactly. And what happened? The administration at the time wouldn't even count the amount of people that were being tested. They didn't want to count the amount of people that died. They were hoping to use confusion to win an election. 
the CDC, which was under that person at the time, was being coerced into misleading America. Yeah, the background is not moving. I, I noticed that. That was, the, that was the first thing I noticed is the background that was not moving. The second thing I noticed was the bug zipping left and right and that one hair that seems to be, have been dancing in this rather bizarre uh, way. That was the other thing that I, I noticed. <laughs> uh, New York is uh, the city of New York, or is it the state of New York, is about to get themselves a uh, very tall building. They're about to get a big chunk of real estate in central Manhattan. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, uh, the prince's pride at uh, courage of his wife. Don't blame the public for the failing uh, Kate Middleton. Blame the palace. Uh, and then what else is that? Don't blame this. Okay, we went through those already. So let's continue. Now, right here is sad that when she had to be so honest, friends of Kate say it's as, uh, oh, is this the right day? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> friends of Kate Middleton say it was almost desperate that Princess had to open up about her cancer battle after the whole world was gossiping about her. You know, <clears throat> because there were no updates, because there was no Kate Middleton, and then the Mother's Day photo is what poured kerosene over what was just a little small blaze. And they're trying to gaslight us and make us believe that collectively society has done something terrible. Well, no society hasn't done anything terrible. And as for the uh, chumly, rock savage, Hanbury people, it's unfortunate that they have been pulled into this. However... Dare I say, it was also unfortunate that Harry and Meghan were sacrificed for the sake of covering up this situation that nobody should have been pulled into, okay? I'm not in a very understanding mood about that because Harry and Meghan were the true innocent parties. As for those other people that have been pulled into it, I don't know what the nature of their relationship was. Maybe it was a big misunderstanding or maybe something happened. But that is how they suffered from one another's friendship, relationship, um, booty call, whatever it was. It could have remained among those four people. Harry and Meghan were the innocent parties that were pulled into something and made sacrifices for the media in exchange for keeping quiet. That's the way I read it. And that is what they've said, is that it has been a terrible amount of projection, everything bad and terrible that has uh, been said about the Sussexes' relationship. Oh, remember they were trying to sell us on the idea that they were getting a divorce? And what happens? That 2024 announcement... The only thing that stopped it is because somebody got sick. Otherwise, we ended last year. <laughs> we ended last year with William declaring that for here on out, henceforth, I'm working alone. We are no longer a double act. Now, is that my imagination or did that really happen? That sounds like someone um, racing toward uh, lawyers, not Harry and Megan. Okay. That's what that sounds like. They were the ones getting further apart, not Harry and Megan, but yet they were leaking all this gossip and the gossip was coming from the tabloids. That's where it originated. The tabloids were trying to make this case 
that the Sussexes were no longer together. How about when they said Harry stayed at a hotel uh, that he had? Oh, yeah, they never proved it, but they said that Harry had a room at a hotel in Los Angeles and that he wasn't coming home at night. Really? Uh, Harry doesn't have a helicopter. Harry doesn't have an 8 million pound helicopter. And in the worst traffic in America, if Harry decided, and we don't know that this any of this is true, but if he decided that he needed to stay in town for whatever reason, then that's what happened. That's it. If he had business, then that's what happened. That's it. It could have been anything. It could have been nothing. But I tell you what, when it comes to outward appearance, I'd rather be Harry and Meghan than Will and Kate. I'd rather be them. Adrian Burroughs says, uh, wait, 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 it's moving. There it goes. They said in December the January big announcement was coming. Yes, it was. And January came roaring in. It just took a sidetrack, but yeah, I think the announcement has been pushed back. And you know what, guys? It could be so much at play. Part of this and part of that may be true, but I certainly don't suspect that nothing is part of the, the, the truth or part of the actual story. But if, if the lies and the deception was designed to throw us off or to, I guess, to, to make us or distract us in some kind of way. Because the Sussex squad keeps receipts, we know better. We know better. Okay. Um, I just had a thought about young Harry growing up in that palace alone being neglected after his mom died is sad to think about how lonely he must have been. Megan has given him new life and love. Yes, thank you, Marshar. That is so true. That is so true. That is so true. She gave him options that he didn't even know exist. Why am I seeing... Uh... <laughs> Dutch me not. Are you okay? <laughs> Don't slip and fall on one of those things. <laughs> All I know is if they're uh, breathing, they're lying. Thank you, Coco. Thank you. That's an old saying, but still very true. How about this one? How do you know they're lying? If their lips were moving, they're lying. Uh, let's see. Lorna Williams says, Baron, yes, that happened. He also said the same thing after the disaster Caribbean tour. That new Cambridge way was for them to work separately. Yes. Yes, they have been pushing. Well, he has been pushing Kate away physically. And, of course, when it has come to planning for their future engagements, he went to Singapore without her. He went to New York without her. And then they coerced her into taking that trip to Denmark. And the people of Denmark are still trying to figure out, what was that about? <laughs> Okay, I got my first sound bite for you. I got my first sound bite for you. Uh, that, of course, is Victoria Newton. And Victoria Newton is the one that signed off on that um, awful, awful, awful um, article of Jeremy Clarkson's, the one where he was up all night gnashing his teeth. Yes, that terrible um, 
that terrible um, article. Anyway, there she is. And this really is an indication of how desperate these people are. Because once again, she has had to go into studio. But I want you to listen for her saying how, as a matter of fact, she keeps saying that I talked to the palace last night. She doesn't say source. She just says she directly speaks to them, which is breathtaking. She realized. Okay. Which is breathtaking. Okay. Oh, great. Great. All right. All right. I'm so, I just got some good news. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you very much. All right. Um, mm, oh, 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 there we go. Uh, okay. How long is this one? Oh, it's just a minute and a half. Okay. Oh, boy. I hope it works. I say I hope it works. Let me see. And it's buffering. Wasn't doing that earlier. Let's talk about the other big story that we talked briefly about at the beginning, and then we spoke to Paddy Harvison, who clearly, Victoria, in his view, yes, social media has acted in all sorts of crazy ways. It's been a bit like the Wild West. But he was also clear that the mainstream media has played a part in creating some of the frenzy. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you published this front page, I think, which said, lay off Kate. We can show it, I think, to our viewers. Maybe it'll pop up in a few seconds. There, there it is. So you were you know, sending that message, basically saying, leave her alone. But then your paper obtained, and I think paid for footage of her out shopping in Windsor with William. And then today you've got nine pages in your Sunday edition all about the story. So isn't that a contradiction? I don't think so at all. No, um, I was really moved the day of the Photoshop fail when the whole world was attacking her. I just thought it was outrageous. This poor woman was clearly ill and was so desperate that she, she tweaked a photo, minor tweaks, to make it look a little bit better. So that's why I did that front page. And it was really important. It then changed the narrative. A lot of the rest of the media then started saying back off Kate. So I don't accept uh, what you said earlier. Um, in terms of reporting the fact that they went out to the Windsor farm shop um, a few days later, they knew that if they went out there in, in public, mingled with members of the public, they would be seen and potentially photographed because everyone's got a camera phone now. And that's how it happened. It wasn't a photographer. It was a camera phone. And of course, I was in discussions with the palace all along with that. And there was no problem with us running, running those images. And it kind of felt that the nation was desperate to see her. Let's talk about the other. I'm going to do that again. But I was in discussion with the palace. One more time big story that we talked briefly about at the beginning and then we spoke to Paddy Harvison who clearly Victoria in his view yes social media has acted in all sorts of crazy ways it's been a bit like the wild west but he was also clear that the mainstream media has played a part in creating some of the frenzy now a couple of weeks ago you published this front page I think which said lay off Kate we can show it I think to our viewers maybe it'll pop up in a few seconds there there it is so you were you know sending that message basically saying leave her alone but then your paper obtained and I think paid for footage of her out shopping in Windsor with William. And then today you've got nine pages in your Sunday edition all about the story. So isn't that a contradiction? I don't think so at all. No, um, I was really moved the day of the Photoshop fail when the whole world was attacking her. I just thought it was outrageous. This poor woman was clearly ill and was so desperate that she, she tweaked a photo, minor tweaks, to make it look a little bit better. So that's why I did that front page. And it was really important. It then changed the narrative. A lot of the rest of the media then started saying back off Kate. So I don't accept uh, what you said earlier. Um, in terms of reporting the fact that they went out to the Windsor farm shop uh, a few days later, they knew that if they went out there in, in public, mingled with members of the public, they would be seen and potentially photographed because everyone's got a camera phone now. And that's how it happened. It wasn't a photographer. It was a camera phone. And of course, I was in discussions with the palace all along with that. And there was no problem with us running, running those images. And it kind of felt that the nation was desperate to see her. 
So the lady asked her, don't you think that's a contradiction? Nope. <laughs> Your paper paid for those videos. Yep. And you were in contact with the palace the whole time. Yeah. And seriously, she is saying with her whole chest stuck out, with full throated saying that there's no contradiction. We had to do something. These are all the things that they wouldn't have thought to do for Megan. If anything, they just make things worse. By the way, Harry has been in litigation with these very same people. Victoria Newton is one of the people named uh, with the phone hacking thing. You know? So, and these people keep their jobs. And nobody sees that there's anything wrong with the way they conduct themselves, with the with the way that they have bent over backwards to accommodate the royal family. They are an extension of the palace. B. Martin says, wait a minute, did she say uh, quit her job to go freelance? Somebody needs money. <laughs> Thank you, B. Martin. Is 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 breathtaking. Is is you you don't know how to. I mean, it's. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, they're saying it out loud, so you can't say you didn't hear it. I mean, who writes an article? Back off, Kate. And that's why I told you all. I said, even if you don't read the articles, those newspapers are billboards. They are individual billboards. Yeah, and she said Photoshop fail. It was a Frankenstein monster. The photo was not a Photoshop. It wasn't just an adjustment. People were cut and paste into, it, it was likely some type of AI thing, as though it took images from different places. I can't even describe what happened because there are 16, possibly 18 points of interest in that one photo. If that photo, if that photo was, let's say somebody come after you and, and give and blast you with some buckshots and the doctor says, well, we got them all. Like they picked every buckshot out of you and they go and give you x-ray. And what do you know? It lights up like a Christmas tree. You still full of buckshot. Guess you're going to have to keep it. I mean, that is, they are literally working. And, and <laughs> let me remind you all of something. This is the woman who was with Charles the night before his mother died. She was very proud to have spent the evening prior to the Queen's death with Charles for his last full day as the Prince of Wales. Also, she said, as usual, he was very generous, his usual generosity. Well, he ought to be. I mean, it's taxpayer-funded living, isn't it? He should be generous. A nation of 66 million people uh, pretty much uh, hand him money so that he can be generous. Centuries of wealth extracted from peasants, commoners, if you will, to facilitate his lifestyle. So this lady, Victoria Newton, is in it all the way up to her ear earlobes. She's in it with these people. Just yesterday, I showed you. Where is that at? Where is that? 
Now she works uh, what for the Sun? Victoria Newton of the Sun. Let me see. Oh, is this it? No. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, oh, yeah, coming up, coming up. Where is it? Oh, my goodness, I had a lot of slides yesterday. Oh, well, I wanted to show you the one where Charles and Camilla. Oh, there it is. Take a look right there. There's the sun. There it is. Happy birthday, your Royal Highness, uh, Prince of Wales. Happy birthday from the sun. The sun gave Charles a birthday cake. And look at him like a little stooge. The Sun, owned by Rupert Murdoch, the newspaper that Harry has been in court fighting for quite some time now. And he's accepting a birthday cake from that same newspaper. So when Harry say they're trapped, they're trapped. They're trapped and they don't know how to get out of it because they have crawled up into bed with Satan. And there's not much they could do about it. Thank you, Adrian Burrow. And B. Martim says, wait a minute, did she? Oh, I'm sorry, I did that one already. Got to keep going here. Oh, uh, Mackenzie says, nobody was checking for Kate until William wanted to compete with his father's prostate and <laughs> make breaking news to announce her surgery. Now they're weaponizing white women's fragility. Yes, exactly. The most protected in all of Western civilization, the most protected white women are very protected. Um, and of course, the ultimate victim are white men, wealthy white men pretend that the world is against them. That is what um, Donald Trump has been doing. That is what Bill O'Reilly used to do, Tucker Carlson, um, even Pierce Morgan. Wealthy, influential white men, usually older, they play victim. That, that this, uh, what do you call it, this culture war, is all about taking something from them. And as for white women, historically, there have been so many people that have been lynched because a white woman said something happened to her. And there was a famous case in Illinois. Um, gosh, what is that guy's name? I know his last name was Webb. This woman accused him of, you know, assaulting her. And he went to prison. And he went to prison for years. He was in there for years. And finally, she recant, uh, was it recanted her story. And he was set free. And she seemed to have absolutely no guilt about it whatsoever. She gave a little apology, apology, but some of the prime years of his life was lost. But if that was a black woman... We all know that there is less likelihood that people would believe her. Um, if a black woman goes to the hospital complaining about pain, they are likely more likely to say that she just wants drugs. I don't care how well she's dressed. I don't care what type of insurance. There's always these assumptions these racist assumptions about black people. But white women have been protected by society. And so when people say that they don't understand the how the Kate made, uh, Megan made Kate cry thing, why that was so triggering 
and hurtful to black women, it's because weaponizing a white woman's tears has gotten so many people killed. So many. Lynchings were about weaponizing a white woman's tears. And I heard recently there was a guy on the social media, I think it was a TikTok, where he said he was walking toward an elevator and he decided that he did not want to ride in the elevator with this white woman. I myself have been in that situation. And I usually say, I'll take the next one. I do. I have done that several times. I'll take the next one. Because there's this awkwardness because of that very thing. And so when that happened to Megan, it was a very serious thing. Because even now, there is so much hostility toward Megan because of Kate's fragility. Because Kate is protected. And putting her on that bench in that very Christ-like angelic pose with the halo around her hair as though she had been crucified. And then, of course, along with that, they're running articles insinuating that she got cancer because of Harry and Meghan. Or Harry and Meghan is what made her situation worse. Will Harry and Meghan reach out to her? Will Harry and Meghan leave her alone? And this is all in the same newspaper. And I didn't even tell you what I saw before I went on today. But the last headline that I saw, no Sussex reunion, right? No Sussex reunion, Daily Bell. William and Kate are putting Harry's problem to back of their minds in wake of cancer battle and have no plans for reconciliation during Duke of Sussex expected May UK visit, right? And then when you scroll further down, you scroll further down, then there's something else that says Harry and Meghan ally claims William uh, threw Kate under the bus and accuses Palace of lying before. Oh, wait a minute. That one's new. I didn't see that one. Uh-oh. That's, um, <laughs> that's that. Wait, I didn't see that one. That one is um uh, uh Bozy, Boozy. Okay. Oh wow, that one was new. Anyway, let me get out of this thing because I'll get stuck there. Uh McKenzie says nobody. Oh, I'm sorry, McKenzie. I saw that already. Thank you so much. I gotta stop looking at that. Come on, Christopher. <laughs> Thank you, McKenzie. <laughs> I'm so messy. I'm so messy. <laughs> Black Queen says, Baron, uh, what was uh what was that bee doing there with ch with chuckles on on his side hoof? <laughs> I mean on his side hoof. Uh you know how they love uh that third person in the our marriage type of deal. Generous, I bet. I understand what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> oh, McKenzie, 16 months membership to any British media watching this. Pack well on your way to hell. <laughs> That's all. Everyone else in the squad, have a uh, blessed Palm Sunday. Thank you so much, McKenzie. Oh, that's right. It is Palm Sunday. Yeah, happy Palm Sunday, uh, Catholics. <laughs> They, they celebrate that in other churches too, right? Anyway, it's Palm Sunday. It was, is, was. Okay, thank you, Mackenzie. Gosh, I'm feeling messy. I feel messy. I feel messy. Legs. Lex says, still trying to make it uh, seem like Kate, whoever that is, did small Photoshopping. Question is, why do they need to do that in the first place, uh, still trying to give Kate something, whether it is photography or piano. Thank you so much, Legs. 
Remember that time when she played the piano in the blue dress? Is there anything Kate Middleton can't do? Or was that for the Westminster Abbey with the red uh, outfit on? Either one of them, she played the piano, hitting those same three notes, and the headline, is there anything Kate Middleton can't do? She came Photoshop. <laughs> she don't know how to edit photos. Uh, whoever asked that question, she don't know how to edit photos. That's something she can't do. So that makes two things. She can't talk. She can't edit. Next. <laughs> uh, thank you, Legs. Yes, uh, she's not much of a speaker, and she can't edit photos. Next. <laughs> Let me see if I have that headline. Do I have that one? Uh, no, I do not. Fudge. I wish I did. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. You guys, I told you, I keep my receipts because I never know when I might need it. So I usually keep my receipts. And can you believe um, I still have that one? I still have that one. And yes, it was from the Phantom of Westminster Abbey. Yep. I still have that receipt. Okay. Coming up. Coming up. Because I never know when I might need it. You guys, I got a ton of stuff. I got a ton of stuff. Whenever I need to reference something, is there anything Kate can't do? Duchess wows royal fans as she hints she will give first ever public piano performance. They got the capacity to call it a public piano performance during carol concert broadcast. New clip of Kate Middleton, 39, ahead of Christmas carol service release. Duchess of Cambridge can be seen sitting at a piano in Westminster Abbey. Um, why am I thinking about that movie, The Bad Seed, with Patty McCormick? Why am I thinking of the movie, The Bad Seed? Why does The Bad Seed come to mind? I don't know why. It just reminds me of that. Uh, what's that? Methodist people honor Palm Sunday, too. Okay. I knew that. I mean, you know how deeply religious and, and how um how um you know righteous i am as a matter of fact um is there a church on the corner anyway there's a church close to me and i go past that place all the time so um don't get it twisted i'm the righteous of the righteous <laughs> the holiest of the holy um yeah, I'm I'm into all of that. <laughs> so Asalama Shalom. I'm into all of that. Don't get it twisted. Okay, so <laughs> Shaboom. There you go. Shaboom. Um, oh, I got to take that away. Is there anything Kate can't do? Now, to be fair to um, Kate Middleton, uh, you know, it's always important that we reach out to Kensington Palace uh, for comment. I mean, we just have to because I think it may even be something with the FCC um, that I'm required to do that. Well, obviously it'd be, um, I would love to have met her um, and 
and she's obviously she's, a, she's an inspirational woman to to look up to um, obviously on the to this day and you know going forward and things you know it is you know it's a wonderful family the, the members who I've who I've met have achieved a lot and you know very inspirational so um, yeah I do all right that's what she did well thank you lady T and you know what one of my favorite things is that they have that little box when you walk into the church where you can just dip your hand in there and get some um, get a couple of dollars to put in your gas tank. That's one of my favorite things is that little box that they have. It's, it says poor box. And because I'm po, I always dip in there and get me a couple of dollars out so I can uh, get me some um, pork rinds and a pickle. Okay. That's what I like about those places. They're very nice. Uh, okay, so let's move on. Oh, do I have another sound bite? I sure do. I sure do. Let me do this one, and I think that this might be it for the sound bite. So let me do this one. I think you'll love this one, though. I don't know who these people are, to be honest with you, but um, oh, there it is right there. Okay. All right. Okay, let me see here. Got to know more about Megan. We've learned that she is someone who is also very sincere in her advocacy for charities. Is that something that you were aware of when you were making the show? I remember early on, I think it was season one or season two, she realized when we were finished with the crew lunches or dinners that a lot of times they were throwing the food away. And she, she thought it was crazy. Why are we throwing food away when there are people that are hungry around and we can give it to them? And she'd gone up the chain to try to get this food to be given away to people that were hungry. And there was some sort of policy or insurance or some bureaucracy that was getting in the way. And Megan, this kind of sums up Megan. She sees a problem. There's some sort of impediment to it that doesn't really make sense. She decides this impediment is harming people that are hungry from getting food. And I don't know how she did it, but the next thing you know, we gave the food away to the hungry people. So, <laughs> so there you go. Um, before the hate campaign against Megan, not only was she notorious for her generosity and her kindness and thoughtfulness, and the fact that like a lot of uh, very smart people, she, she's a letter writer. She keeps in touch with people with pen and paper, which is a rare quality nowadays. But when she sees there's a problem, she solves it, or at least she will try. And so even though she was, you know, working uh, and a working actress on a series, which nowadays is, um, well, it's always been something that anyone should be proud of because... There's a lot of people that call themselves actors that will never do a uh, long time theater engagement or appear on television or in a major motion picture of some kind. So very proud of the fact that she spent seven years on that series. Very proud of that. And even during that period in her life, Megan always found time to give something back. And if you have ever been on a movie set or television show, they have something called craft service. And craft service is, well, that's where you can get anything you want to eat. You can graze and munch all day. Like, do you guys remember that period on the Facts of Life when Blair and Tootie and, and Natalie and uh, Joe... If you remember, they all put on about between 20 to 50 pounds that one season. And why was that? Craft service. <laughs> they worked too much to have boyfriends. Um, they weren't on that stuff Uncle Gary passes around. So they ain't had nothing else to do but eat. I mean, every time a new season of The Facts of Life would start filming, the um, price of grain would skyrocket because, well, anyway. <laughs> I 
because the facts of life, the facts of life. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, anyway, I'm, I'm just being silly. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Anyway, them big heifers, they could pack away some food. I mean, they could pack it away. And they ate and ate and ate until they could not fit in their uh, costumes anymore. And they didn't care if the rest of them got fat. But see, Blair was supposed to be the skinny, uh, beautiful blonde. And while they were all still beautiful, they didn't want her to get fat because she was supposed to be like, you know, the, the real eye candy of the group, if that doesn't sound weird. So they had to put her on a diet. Matter of fact, I think they put everybody on a diet. But when you're making a movie or something like that, you ain't got nothing else to do but sit around all day until they say they need you. Sometimes you come to work, they don't need you at all. Oh, see there? Amber Rowan. Wow, we're, we're on the same wavelength here. Yeah, I remember the whole article on how the Facts of Life crew blew up. Ooh, they got chunky. They were huge. They were huge. Yep. I mean, they just over, it was one season, they just all blew up. The whole season, you just watch them get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, what an interesting trip down memory lane, right? Let me see. I saw that the actress that played Natalie and the Sherry Shepard show on YouTube recently. Interesting story on the actors she started out with. Oh, okay. That's got to be interesting. I like to watch those interviews with people um, that I've watched over the years. Yes, Megan is very caring. And you wouldn't believe that this article is actually from, guess what? The Sun. This article, uh, another reason to love Megan, Marco. Um, uh, okay, the, another reason to love Megan. Megan Marco is a true humanitarian claims charity she worked with in Rwanda and India. Yeah, they... they um, wrote this very nice article about her, and this was actually in the sun. Yep, that sun. Okay, now, husband of the year has removed the post where Kate takes the blame uh, for bad Photoshop fake photo. For bad Photoshop from official Instagram account Clean up in, on aisle three in process. One of the squaddies created this collage that you see on the left side. Actually, I think they did a screenshot from the um, Kensington Palace Instagram. And what they've done is they took a screenshot of it to show you that uh, that thing that they had wrote saying that Kate was taking the blame for the Photoshop fail. They removed it. And the reason why they removed it is because people pointed out how William looked like a complete punk. William, William allowed his wife to take the blame. If you're ill, if you're sick, if you're being treated for cancer, there's no way in the world that you are supposed to take the blame for anything if you're a big six foot three, um, very lurking, lurch looking husband is standing around. If he was any kind of man, he would take the hit for it. But William, who is not much of a man and even less of a gentleman, he allowed his wife to take the punishment, the ridicule. Uh, the humiliation of having Frankenstein that photo. That is not a real man. That is not a real man. Real man would not do something like that. But he didn't have enough sense to stand up for his wife. He did not care 
to stand up for his wife. He let her take the blame. Who does that? And just like his father, yes, uh, Lydia Washington says, William does not protect any woman he deals with, Kate or Rose, just like his father, just like his father, do not protect the women in, your, in their life. Uh, the only reason um, that, uh, what do you call it, that Camilla has gotten protection is because Charles needed her. But in the early days when Camilla was being uh, chased, well, not chased, but they were, uh, the media was hanging outside of her house. Uh, I believe it was after Diana died, the media would not leave her alone. And she did not have any type of police protection or security. Um, and Charles let her exist like that for quite some time before he actually did something about it. He is very, very indecisive. But because Camilla is his co-conspirator, he kind of didn't have a choice but to get up off of his childbearing hips and do something. But yeah, he's 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 a punk too. They're, they're both very weak. Those are two very, very weak individuals, Charles and his son, both of them, um, his, his other son, that is. So I'm going to let you hear what this guy had said yesterday. I know I said no more of those, but um, yeah, B. Martim says that was a punk move. Absolutely. Thank you, B. Martim. That was a punk move. If there ever was one, that was a punk move. Oh, you know what? I'm doing that the wrong way. Doing that the wrong way. Mm. Rise and shine and sing out the glory, glory. Rise and shine and sing out. Oh, there we go. Nope. There is no world in which a public figure whose entire job is to be the public face of an entire country, whose life is partly funded by the public of that entire country, would ever have a cancer diagnosis in private. That's not real. That's why we know about King Charles's. Now, obviously, is there something that we can all learn here about not jumping to conclusions and not jumping on bandwagons and keeping our cool a little bit more in the future? Absolutely. So yeah, sure, lesson learned. But there is no world in which Kate Middleton would have just privately dealt with her cancer if we had all shut up. That's not real. But more importantly, we didn't create this debacle, the palace did. And then they threw gas on it over and over again. And most important of all, when it all blew up, the palace threw a woman being treated for cancer under the bus and blamed it all on her. After they originally attributed it to Prince William, by the way, no amount of people taking the bait they fed us and running with it is in any way as egregious as this. Like, th this is... And if anything, the gravity of what the truth has ended up being just kind of underlines how, like, egregious the disarray in the palace's PR arm truly is. I mean, it's like, this is dehumanizing. Like, this is really dark. Woof. Anyway, with all that said, lesson learned, and obviously, truly really hope that she's okay and, you know, wishing her a speedy recovery and a better PR staff. So you see there, and that's not a squatty talking. Uh, I, I don't think that's a squatty. This is the nightmare of the palace is that they have average everyday people that just happen to have come across these interesting situations and they have formed opinions and they want so desperately to shut that down. They are trying to stop people from thinking and talking. And of course, they're going back to their usual tactic of trying to pull Harry and Meghan into it to make Harry and Meghan the villain. But the trouble is they have been identified. They have been called out for making Harry and Meghan the convenient uh, villain in this story. 
And so it's, they have to really, really try to uh, finesse this in a way that they don't turn people against them. And, and likewise, I don't want Harry and Meghan associated with, you know, some of the heat that's headed, they're headed their way. And I, I'm going to explain that very soon, but they have some heat that is heading their way. They have messed with the wrong people. And we'll get into that. Amber Rowan says, let's call it what it is. Uh, she married to what we call a dusty dude. <laughs> a dusty dude. Thank you so much, Amber Rowan. And YM Joy says, from hunk to lunk. <laughs> Not to mention, uh, Will allegedly took the photo and wanted uh, credit when he thought everyone else was as slow as he is. <laughs> If only it was just a photo, though. If only it was just a photo. Thank you so much, uh, YM Joy. Uh, the thing is, we're not sure what it is because it seems to be, uh, like I say, body parts. It seems to be a bunch of body parts. It is it is fashioned from bits and pieces of, of God knows what. But, you know, uh, this hand, that thigh... This arm, that head, none of it goes together. None of those people were actually there, or at least half of them were not there. It's just very weird the way they did that. But uh, thank you so much, YM Droid. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Early contender for the Caddy, Caddy Brit Young Actor Award. Uh, but seriously, from someone who has made an entire career off of lying and degrading another royal woman, this is stomach churning. Okay, I shared that with you yesterday. And uh, here you can see a collage of how this has been paying off for her. American journalist breaks down in tears amid Kate Middleton cancer diagnosis. They have been, this has been lingering lingering in a very prominent position of that rag ever since they posted it two days ago. They want to make sure that everybody sees this. So this is like a big coup for um, Kenzie Schofield. She is getting a very prominent position in the newspaper. And of course, um, <laughs> I am going to have to turn to somebody who don't take anything off of anybody uh, to come up with a way to put this person in their place. Hey, girl, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. So, yes, if you're watching Kenzie Schofield, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> or are you hybrid of Tammy Faye Baker and God knows what? Please have a seat. You could turn off the waterworks. Don't nobody care nothing about that. Nobody cares about that. As a matter of fact, um, there's a better way to put it. I say there's a better way to put it. <laughs> I'm getting a little slow off the block with this today. Ain't nobody got time for that. You see what I mean? That's what I'm trying to say. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. We ain't got time for that. So sit down. Now, uh, Christopher Bosey, uh, they are literally ready to shut down uh, Twitter because people outside of the UK are calling out the British press when vile trolls were calling Megan babies dolls and called Megan uh, 
an unsavory person, none of these clowns had anything to say where uh, their outrage was as fake as the farm video. <laughs> no wonder they mad at him. Yes, their outrage was as fake as the farm video. Come on, Christopher. I knew it was a good one. Um, but yeah, and it's true. Their outrage, or the lack thereof, but they had very little outrage. They did not care about Megan. They allowed Megan to be maligned and bullied. It was a sport. It was a sport. And all of the tabloid reporters participated. They made great sport out of it. And the, the, the more that they were willing to uh, go after her, the more money they seemed to make. The wackier the claims, the more money they seem to make. Mm. Oh, God, there's that person. Oh, I cannot stand him. I just saw the face of one of those political people. I'm not going to say his name, but <sighs> they only roll him out every four years. Every four years, they roll him out. So, Kate conspiracy theories continue as Harry and Meghan ally, they're talking about Christopher Bosey, claims, uh, oh, wait a minute, let me pull that down. Ah, uh, why can I see that? Anyway, uh, were fake, and Princess of Wales reveals her cancer diagnosis, accuses the Palace of North Korea propaganda, while doctors claim the statement does not make medical sense. Well, at least they're telling the truth about that. The doctors did say it doesn't make medical sense. People have called the Palace North Korea. But I don't know why they said the Palace. They really meant Kensington Palace. That's what they were trying to say. You guys, they're trying to spin this. Oh, they got Dr. Rayner. They got Dr. Rayner in that article, the one that was on CNN, the one that said it didn't make sense. Yeah, they are trying to, to take this uh, fight to the people, the, mo the more public people that are calling them out. They got Dr. Rayner in the article who said it didn't make sense. They got Christopher Bosey. Let me see if they have his tweet here. Do they have the courage to put his tweet? No, they don't have his tweet. Not the one I just shared with you. And then he, let me see who wrote this article. Ender Deep Bain, Deputy Chief Reporter. Ender Deep Baines. That's the name, Ender Deep. That's who wrote this article. It had been uh, hoped that the Princesses of Wales' decision to announce the cancer diagnosis would finally bring a stop to the frenzied conspiracy theories being peddled in recent weeks. But despite Kate's delivering an emotional video message which touched the hearts of the nation, the outlandish and cruel claims targeting the 42-year-old, have continued to spiral online. Yes. Yes, they have. <laughs> Y'all, this is a mess. This is a mess. Do you hear me? This is a mess. Will and Kate, I'm sure they're on vacation. I'm sure they're on vacation. Now, they didn't say whether or not Kate was going on vacation, but if they, if somebody uh, posts some photos of them on some beach somewhere, oh, this is going to get weird. This is going to get so bad if, if any photos of them, because, you know, they're usually very good about not publishing photos of Will and Kate on vacation. There's been times when they left the country and we don't know where they went. So I don't suppose that this is going to be any different. But 
if they have photos of them on vacation, this is going to get really messy. So as uh, I do believe what really turned things was not just that photo, not just the Franken photo, but this television special, TMZ Investigates, Where's Kate Middleton? That is the problem right there. Ever since that premiered, they have been freaking out. And then they, you know, used the interview, I'm not interview, but the confessional. And that confessional was supposed to tamp down any dissension, any and all dissension that was supposed to, remember how the headline said, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Don't you feel terrible? And TikTok responded, nope. Now, Uncle Gary, you guys, I got to step on it. I got so much more to cover. What time is it? Oh, my God. Oh, we're going to be here at least another hour. Okay, let me see if I can step on it. I'm going to stop talking as much or, or looking in the comments as much so we can get through this because it's some important stuff. Okay, celebrity big brother person. Um, this was when we found out he was going to big brother, right? Yes, that clown, Gary Goldsmith. Kate Middleton's uncle Gary slams fickled Fickle Meghan Markle says she's bad for Prince Harry and our country. Then later on, let me see, the next day, which was today, Kate Middleton Uncle Gary apologizes after slamming Fickle Meghan Markle in scathing interview. Shouldn't that be after calling Meghan Markle Fickle? Now here, they have a very sly way of declaring this is page six, Emily Selick declaring Meghan Markle fickle after slamming fickle Meghan Markle. Okay, if we're dropping F words, be careful. And so there you can see it. Kate Middleton uncle pulls a U-turn after calling Meghan Markle the laughing girl. That was the other thing. And Kate Middleton uncle apologizes for blasting Meghan Markle ahead of cancer reveal. So this interview obviously took place before Kate's uh, deal. Same here. Kate Middleton uncle Gary says sorry after hitting out at fickle Megan. Oh, they did it too. And after hitting out at fickle Megan in interview outburst. And then over there, Kate Middleton uncle <clears throat> Gary Goldsmith apologizes for insulting Meghan Markle. Now, see, that's not a tabloid, I think. Okay, Blast, I don't know if that's a tabloid, but we know TMZ is. Mirror, definitely a tabloid. And Pink Villa, since they didn't call her fickle, I'm going to assume that they're not. They're just telling the story. All right, whatever. But what is the fuss about? So I condensed what I found, but here goes. That's why it makes no um, that's why it makes me so sick about what Megan said about Kate, Goldsmith says, going slightly off pissed. Is that what that means? Pissed? Pissed? Pissed a pissed? Oh well. Uh, me and Carol grew up in a community as diverse as a Woolies pick, pick and mix counter. That must be something British. All the uh, cultures you can think of, the idea that Laughing Girl says Kate is racist makes me furious. Kate knows her family's root and is proud of them. I'm sorry, but Laughing Girl is not good people. Occasionally, we will need a glossary to get through this interview. Laughing girl means Meghan Markle. Not good people obviously means Goldsmith is not a fan. So then he continues 
Don't get me started, he fumes. So that was in the article. By the way, I think this was in the Times, I think. I think it was the Times. Anyway, recently Goldsmith predicted that Harry would return to the United Kingdom and play a role once, again, once more. Uh, he seemed to have some insider knowledge. He don't know nothing. No one I don't have, I'm sorry, no, I don't have an insider knowledge, but my sense is the family will never uh, turn back on Harry fully. He's naive to think he can throw his family under the bus and still get invited for Christmas at Sandringham. I mean, how stupid can you be? Harry wouldn't even make a uh, pub quiz team but he, but I'm sorry, but he uh, was still loved by all and had the best job in the world. He had all the privilege, but with diminished duties. He had the house, the money, the polo, and could choose his royal patronages with everyone accepting he was a bit fruit bat with the whole prince thing. I think he'll be back but only if he says sorry. Uh, let me see. He's upset his nan. Yeah, he upset his nan, and that was unforgivable. But let's face it, Laughing Girl isn't going to be around forever. That sounds ominous, doesn't it? Is she? Laughing Girl is not going to be around forever, is she? I think she's fickle, and I think... She's so bad for Harry and for our country. Ain't that a B-I-T-C-H? That's what Uncle Gary said. That is what Uncle Gary said. His unsolicited opinion about Rachel Meghan Markle. A.K.A. the Duchess of Sussex. Oh, and then over there... He uh, also said spare was a joke. It's pathetic. A frontline soldier for this country getting tearful because he broke his string necklace and landed on a dog bowl in spare. Prince Harry recounted how when William called Meghan rude and, a, and, a, and abrasive, they got into a physical fight in which Harry's bracelet broken and he fell into a ceramic doll a dog bowl. Uh, Putin would be laughing at us if that's the best we got, uh, says Uncle Gary. Someone who has never seen war, has never even been in the military as far as I know. Uh, his battlefield was not catching a disease during the 1980s. So what does he know? Uh, Kate is the only one with the uh, laughing hysteria. Yeah, I believe that he was referring to Megan. I did not get that reference, but laughing girl? I didn't get that reference. I don't know how that applies to Megan. When is Kate is the one that's forever, you know? I don't know why he said that about Megan. Uh, let me see. Harry was treated like crap. He's doing a whole lot better now. Better home, better, uh, yeah, better home, car, beautiful wife, and kids. And he's free of those idiots. There you go. I was wondering why you were getting three bells. Oh, was he trying to say mix picking any? I wonder, wait a minute, where is that at? I wonder. Wow, Black Queen, good eye. Good eye. Yeah, maybe they changed it uh, for the article. What do you think? Ain't that something? Yeah, we are very much not a racist family, are we? Ooh. Ooh, Black Queen, you called it. You called it. 
Anyway, meet Uncle Gary. That's Kate's uncle. I've shared this a few times. There's Kate's uncle. Um, he has physically abused his wife, decked her, knocked her out, Cole. Um, there he is processing some baking soda, uh, urinating in public. And, of course, there was something about one of his homes in the south of France or wherever it was. It was a known place of very shady and dodgy dealing, if you know what I mean. That kind of dealing. So, yeah, he is a treasure, trust me. Now, instead of Kate Middleton, a.k.a. Princess of Wales, Uncle Gary Goldsmith, uh, praying for his niece, he is doing interviews insulting Megan. He isn't doing his niece any favors. Despite her poor health, <clears throat> Kate Middleton still found time to send her Uncle Gary Goldsmith insult Megan. Uh, send her Uncle Gary Goldsmith to insult, you know what I mean. Okay, uh, now that is backfiring, Uncle Gary has issued an apology as fake as Kate's Mother Day photography. <laughs> Let's give Kate time to time and show some love back, says Uncle Gary. Right. Right. Okay. Okay, there's some good news from Misan Harriman. Well, uh, a film that could quite possibly save another person's life. Words... Awards Daily in a tender directorial debut celebrated photographer Misan Harriman expands the aperture of his work to reveal a lovely, lovely embrace of narrative cinematic storytelling featuring a blistering performance by the always brilliant David Aiello, Ava DuVernay. Uh, David Aiello captures the lingering nature of grief and how it finds its way into every crevice of life. Director Misan Harriman brings a searing and undeniable human humanity to uh, the story. Barbara Bracoli, The After is on Netflix globally now. And remember, it's a short, so if you guys choose to watch it, which I hope you will, I think it's only 18 minutes long. Okay, 18 minutes long. All right, now. Let me get to some shadiness. There she is. Um, that, of course, is Rebecca English. Not to be confused with Rebecca Brooks, the big redhead who is like a daughter to um, Rupert Murdoch. No, that's not the one. This is a different one. Rebecca Brooks also... Uh, does, no, she works for Lord Nappyhead. I think she's in the, the Daily Fail. But she is like the Grand Poobah. She is chief among royal reporters. She is the one who decides who goes where when it comes to um, the royal rota. Now, the royal rota, what it is, is they rotate uh, where they will cover the royal family. Now, how big you are in terms of your newspaper or, yeah, your newspaper and how trusted you are also makes a difference, as well as does she like you? The whole point of it is she is the gatekeeper for the royal rota. She decides who gets access to the members of the royal family. I don't think it's an official thing, but that is the one who seems to call the shots. Now, she also writes for the Daily Mail. And right here, she wrote an article 
was it her? Oh, it says male investigation unit. Anyway, she approved of an article or she shared this article. Cruel British troll who used Chinese social media platform TikTok to cash in on lurid Kate claims uh, is unmasked at last after his hurtful claims about Princess of Wales spread across the world. <laughs> so Paul uh, Condron, Condron cashed in on claims through the official TikTok showcase store. Um, now, that headline is a bit troublesome because one of the things that they are pushing in Western society is this anti-China um, movement or beware of the Chinese government, anti-communist uh, China. We are going back to those days where we are supposed to be wary of China, just like we were supposed to be afraid of Russia. We always got somebody that's an adversary, right? We're supposed to be afraid of Iran and all those other places where we, where our governments seem to have overreached. Now, we all know that China has been exploited by the Western powers, most notably Britain, for quite some time. And so that right there, that headline which no one takes individual credit for. They just put male investigation unit. There's no individual person taking credit for that headline. That is designed to uh, alarm anybody who's afraid that China is taking over. Also, they're afraid of corporate espionage as though China is trying to steal our intellectual secrets in terms of electronics and such. And to an extent, they are, that is true. That is true. Uh, China does a lot of manufacturing, even for Apple. Apple comes from China. Designed in California, but wherever possible, they have been responsible for a lot of counterfeit goods. And so when you think China, you also think cheap knockoffs and counterfeit. However, China does have a tech industry. And part of it, part of their Silicon Valley uh, came TikTok. And people love TikTok. I have a TikTok account. Now, they always warn you. Don't get TikTok because they're going to get access to your computer and such and such and so and so. Let me tell you something. If there were any naked photos on my hard drive and they got access to it, trust me. Um, just look for the person who has gouged their own eyes out, okay? Look for the person who has been dry heaving since they got into my computer. Look for that person because... It hurt them more than it could ever possibly hurt me. <laughs> you want problems? Try to find some naked pictures of me. And I you have all the problems you you want. You wouldn't need no Ozempics. You wouldn't need Weight Watchers. You wouldn't need any of that stuff. If there's anything you should avoid, is a naked, over-caffeinated, chubby baby boomer um, that is comfortable in the safety of their own home. Now, that being said, I do have tape over my camera because <laughs> I don't want TikTok watching me coming out the shower. But anyway, I'm being silly, but you know what I'm trying to say. I just don't worry about that stuff. So that's why they're saying... Chinese social media platform, TikTok, so that they could scare people. And I'm thinking to myself, do you all really want to go after TikTok? And then let me show you the next big mistake that they have made. 
Uh, the QAnon folks have gotten a hold of the video and they are calling and seemingly proving it's AI generated. Kensington Palace has lost this forever. All the lies uh, they told, all the nonsense, all the bile, um, they, uh, just to sustain Egg's ego has led them to this. It goes on to say, mind you, I am not in any way, shape, form, or part of the, um, what is that? The sec, the section, the set, whatever it is. Um, point is, once QAnon gets hold of anything, it's over. That's a word I never want. Uh, I'm sorry. That's a world I never want to visit. So this person is sending the message out to this person who so proudly um, put this on her timeline, on her uh, Twitter. She put that on her Twitter account. And so this is the person right here. They have essentially doxed. You guys keep hearing that term doxed. If you don't know what dox mean, dox means, let's say there's some big mouth, over-caffeinated, chubby baby boomer that has a platform with 53,800 subscribers. And all day long, he talks about Kate's mouth is, is askew. Uh, he talks about how William looks like he's um, uh, uh, the Humpty Dumpty, the egg, or Charles Chow, Chow, uh, childbearing hips, or he called Camilla a horse. So let's say you get tired of hearing that, and so you start looking for anything, like you want to find that person's employer so that you can tell them all of the nasty, horrible, offensive things that they're doing in their spare time, right? That's what doxing is. Doxing is where you expose a person's image, their address, their, uh, their work, any of that stuff. That's what doxing is. I guess that's in reference to documents or dox. Well, but that's what they call doxing. So this guy, they are saying that he has just been doxed by the Daily Mail. Their words, not mine. Okay. So um, a suburban conspiracy theory super spreader. Do you hear the language that they're using? A suburban conspiracy theory super spreader whose lurid speculation about the Prince of Wales went global is today unmasked by the mail on Sunday. So this is a direct provocation. They are going after this kid because he dared speak out about a public figure, Prince William. Okay. So Paul Condron, uh, who hides behind an anonymous TikTok handle, spewed deeply hurtful and false stories about Kate. His cruel claims were shared to millions around the world after being reposted by celebrity gossip blogger Perez Hilton. But wait, it gets better. But despite this, TikTok, the Chinese social media giant, allowed Condron, if I'm saying his name right, uh, to cash in on the claims by selling an, uh, an add-on subscription service on his page and flogging his clothing merchandise through the official TikTok showcase store the mail was able to track down the toxic troll, notice the language, the toxic troll, to his girlfriend's two-bedroom home in southwest London. They went to his girlfriend's house. 
Condren uh, refused to say how much money he has made and said he was not, uh, what is that, fussed about peddling the wild conspiracies online before retreating and refusing to answer any further questions. Wild conspiracies? Couldn't you make the same argument about the tabloids, about the royal reporters, the so like uh, Angela Levin? I would say she peddles in conspiracies. Remember she said they probably had cameras in their pockets? Asked about the, uh, his video, his girlfriend said, I don't really watch them. It's not my cup of tea. I know he does a few of them, but... Um, I don't really know how, I don't really know much about them. He does it uh, all around. Okay, he does it all around. He just pops out basically a neighborhood, I mean, a neighbor that is. He just pops out. A neighbor told the mail that Cordon spends most of his time at home and was shocked when shown the post. He said, this is news to me. I didn't even know he was doing this. He doesn't come across as someone who's computer savvy. Well, I hope for their sake they got the right person. But they put his picture in the paper. Uh, good night, Gwendolyn Daniels. So the Daily Mail doxing people for daring to speculate. And then Rebecca English says, cruel British trolls use Chinese social media platform TikTok to cash in on lurid Kate claims is unmasked at last. Um, okay, so he's actually responding to what she had wrote already. And then Truth Signal says, well, have a counter dox. Uh, yeah, we'll have a counter dox as it's war now. Oof. And then Slippery Slope uh, to Doc's uh, social media account because sooner or later, one will sue and I don't think either the UK press or KP wants to open themselves up to discovery stage of a trial where every little detail published article about this dis, uh, discourse could get fact-checked. Uh, these kids ain't playing, y'all. These kids are not playing with these people. They're not playing with these people. You see what they have opened themselves up to? And to show you what cowards they are, they won't even put a name on the article by male investigation units. They are messing with QAnon and this, whatever this website is, Unity News Net, they have been dragging, they have been dragging the Daily Mail. Let me see. Who gave them the right to go after him? Kensington? Uh, well, you know, like they say, the tabloids are just an extension of the royal family uh, news. So right here, Peter Juke says, royal coverage in UK media with this mixture of vitriol, faux family psychology, uh, schmaltz and sycophancy is the most embarrassing and cringeworthy characteristic of the British. Every time it happens over 60, uh, for over 60 years, I feel like a stranger in a strange land. Well, that says a lot. Well, anyway, right there, you can see um, in Scotland, 50% of people want to keep the monarchy. 34 says Republic and 17 don't know. Britain, 67, 20, and 13. Uh, okay, that was for you, Gov. Ooh, if you get over here to uh, 
oh, that was YouGov in 22. When you get to spring of, of 23, you can see the numbers. The numbers are collapsing for um, the people who want to uh, have a monarchy. I mean, 46% compared to 40 and 14. I mean, come on, they're underwater. So very interesting. And right here, Meredith uh, found this. This is something Meredith uh, gave us. It says, I'm working on something unrelated to royals, but involving media and came across this Meghan Markle article in U.S. Weekly about her new podcast venture. Here's uh, Sun UK for comparison. It's just wild how different the framing always is. So uh, let me see. Do I have it here? Nope. <laughs> Pretend like you didn't see that. <laughs> let me see. I cannot see that. That is way too small. That is way too small. But anyway, I guess I just wanted the headline. And the headline says, Megan Marco making moves. Now compare that to what I think is the sun. Mega change. Meg a change. They had to do a little funny thing with her name. Meghan Markle will launch another podcast after ditching archetypes when controversial 18 million pound Spotify deal fell through. How do they squeeze that into a headline? I don't know. Do you see the comparison? Us Weekly uh, Meghan Markle making moves. M M M M. Cute. Compared to the Sun, Meg a change. Meghan Markle will launch another podcast after ditching archetypes when controversial 18 million pound Spotify deal fell through. <laughs> Wait a minute, what is that? I missed it, Baron. I was reading uh, the comments. Uh, what comments? What did I miss? Oh, Sonia Johnson, 15 months membership. Thank you so much for that. Okay, now, I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um... <laughs> Am I wrong for this? Because when I was looking at those videos where they were talking about Kate sitting on the bench, uh, somebody pointed out that her eyebrows did not move. And when I thought about it, I was like, yeah, that one eyebrow seems to be stuck in the up position, right? It kind of reminded me of Rob Lowe in that movie Behind the Candelabra. <laughs> Why does that remind me of Rob Lowe in Behind the Candelabra? What is it about that that reminds me of Rob Lowe in Behind the Candelabra? Does anybody know? Let me know, because I, I just don't get it. It's just something about that look that says Behind the Candelabra. And I said, well, maybe that was just a one-time thing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting Rob low. I am getting Rob low. <laughs> maybe it's just those two photos. <gasps> There's another one. You know what? I think we're on to something here. I think we're on to something. I am definitely seeing Rob low in Behind the Candelabra. Yep, we have a theme going here. We have a theme. If you never saw the movie, the premise of Rob Lowe's character, as shocking as it is, is that he's a plastic surgeon. And just like um, Cy Sperling from Hair Club for Men, you know how Cy Sperling used to say, I'm Cy Sperling, Hair Club for Men. And remember, I'm not just the president of the company. I'm also a customer. Well, here you can see Rob Lowe, his character is not just a surgeon, 
to the stars, he's also a customer. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it was it was a very funny character in uh, that movie, and uh, <laughs> uh, the future of the slim down monarchy. King Charles is set to use reign to overhaul the future of the royal family. So, will Harry and Andrew be out in the cold forever? You know what? At this point, it doesn't matter. This is, um, I actually had this in my archive, and this is something that they put out after the queen died. When the queen died, they started talking about the future. Well, the future is now. How is Charles doing so far? How would you rate his slim down monarchy? I am going to give it a 10 because, as far as I'm concerned, as long as they are messing with Harry and Meghan. I don't care if the whole thing disappears tomorrow. So on a scale of one to 10, I think the slim down monarchy is fantastic because if they keep this up, there won't be a monarchy. Yes, if they keep this up, there will not be a monarchy. And lastly, I'll share this with you. Well, I got two things left. There's this. As you can see, as per usual, Copy Kate and Willie Leaks are trying desperately to be somebody they're not. Only in this instance, you can see Willie Leaks is uh, trying to strike a pose very similar to Harry as well as Megan. Megan, of course, chose the wide leg trousers and the wide leg stance with pleats and William decides that, oh, I'll do the wide leg and I'll stick my hand in my pocket just like my brother. And whereas Harry and Megan is looking directly at the viewer, they seem to be looking over. And I don't know where this is hanging in the gallery, but something tells me that they are looking east. I'm sorry, west, that they are looking west. I'm sure they have it hanging, so it appears as though they're looking west to California. But whatever the case may be, um, Harry and Meghan are winning. And as Harry said, you can see the comment below. Okay, there it is. Okay, let me make this bigger so I can see it. Harry, uh, Prince Harry told Oprah Winfrey the royal family was welcoming to Meghan Markle before tour uh, really changed it. In other words, before they went on the Oceana tour, things were pretty cool. Things were pretty cool. Um, after all, it was like they were in the honeymoon phase of their time in the royal family, right? But as Harry feared, things were changing because Meghan made it look way too easy. And so as excited as Harry was for the success of it, he was also alarmed because he knew what was coming next. They did the same thing to Princess Diana. Diana was so successful with that tour of Australia that Charles got incredibly jealous and their relationship began to spiral from that day forward. I mean, there were peaks and valleys, but mostly a downward spiral. Harry told Winfrey, my father, my brother, Kate, and all the rest of the family were really welcoming to Megan, but it really changed after the Australia tour. After our South Pacific tour, it was the first time that the family got to see how incredible Megan is at the job. And that's why everything began to sour. And if you recall, right after that, uh, Camilla, Tomini, Camilla Tomini had an interview with Carol Middleton. And I believe the 
other thing she did was she wrote that terrible thing about the um, Hub Kitchen and some other stuff. But it wasn't just Camilla Tomini. All of the royal reporters really started singing from the same hymn book. And every song in the book said the same thing. Will and Kate good, Harry and Meghan bad. Will and Kate good, Harry and Meghan bad. And that is what they have been singing ever since. So again, if you ask me what I think about the slim down monarchy, I say keep slimming it down. Keep it slim and slimmer until it ceases to exist. That's what I, I want. Because any institution, I don't care if it's 100,000 years old, but any institution that would um, attack, attack, and I do mean attack, um, an innocent woman who gave up her old life for the man she loves and was willing to devote her time and efforts for the sake of the crown and the people of the Commonwealth, very unselfish of her, um, to want to serve the Commonwealth. It gave her a chance, an opportunity to do the work that she always wanted to do. And it was with a brand new platform that would have taken Harry and Meghan to all corners of the earth. But jealousy is what prevented that from happening. So, um, there's only one way to describe the situation. Those people are very, very bitter. And you know, somebody needs to say it. Bitter. <laughs> bitter, bitter, bitter. That's it. Those people are bitter. Uh, thank you so much, Stephanie Baker. They are bitter. Thank you for the idea. Uh, now look at them copying the Sussexes. That's right. That's what they're doing. Okay, you guys, I'm done. Two and a half hours, not bad, but I am done. So, of course, when you see the flowers, uh, when you see our queens, that is, then you know it's time to go. You know what I mean. Well, the queens and the flowers, because remember, that is Megan's nickname, Flower. And, of course, uh, Princess Diana's favorite flower, the forget-me-not. All right. So thank you all very much. Thank you, everyone that has a membership to Royal Sussex. Good night. I am done. Get to get some sleep, you guys, especially if it's a work night for you. Please do get your rest on. And uh, if you are just starting your day, please have a very, very productive week. I wish you all the best. And, of course, I don't want you guys to think I forgot. Of course, I, I, well, I did forget, but it's never too late. Best wishes to you on Palm Sunday. May your heart be filled with new hopes and your soul with happiness. There you go. Happy Palm Sunday. Oh, and you guys, yesterday, I don't know if you all watched... Um, Oh, gosh, what was it? Yesterday, there was a little conflict with um, my start time and the Duchess of Success. But she had a really, really good uh, show last night. So um, make sure you check it out. I put the link in the community tab. So uh, if you have some extra time, please make sure you check out the Duchess of Success. It was positively perfect. Um, I really enjoyed it. I was just like, yes, yes, you tell them. So I love to hear that kind of passion. But uh, yeah, she was um, she was giving them hell, that institution. So uh, and I think that was was that the last thing I posted? I think it was the last thing I posted. So it should be there in the community tab. Yes, it was the last thing I posted. So uh, if you go to the community it will be there. Okay. Uh, check it out. 
And remember, until this storm passed, um, you know, she had a spot of bother with uh, YouTube. Until the storm passed, uh, there is a link um, on her YouTube for Buy Me a Coffee. That is the best way to support her channel for the time being. So uh, there's two things you could do. You can watch the video and you could also um, use the Buy Me a Coffee um, uh, link that she has. But uh, it won't be long. The storm will be over soon and then she'll be able to make her appeal to the um, to YouTube and hopefully uh, get her channel back in work in order. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Now you're going to have nightmares, no VD. Now you're going to have nightmares. You are going to have nightmares that a gigantic wig is going to chase you all over creation. Now, I was in New Orleans one time, and I saw this weeping willow. And I promise you, for some reason, looking at that weeping willow, I thought the tree was coming after me. And you know why? Because I had caught a glimpse of Nana Akua. So you have to be really careful with that. A weeping willow, um, a big mop at some, you know, janitor's using, uh, going through a car wash. I went through a car wash one time, and every time them brushes went over my car, I swear I could see Nana's face. I did. I In the middle of all those... Uh, <laughs> In the middle of all those brushes and, and uh, strings and everything, I could see Nana's face just looking at me. Oh, oh, God, I have to talk about the Sussexes. I guess I'm going to have to talk about Harry and Meghan. Oh, let's see what Harry and Meghan are up to now. So, yeah, you have to be careful. You ruin your sleep. It's hard to sleep after, you know, gazing directly into Nana's hair. Oh, New York State will be 500 million richer tomorrow. Some folks like to get away, take a holiday from the neighborhood, hop a flight to Miami Beach or to Hollywood. I'm leaving, but I don't want to waste no time. I'm in a New York state of mind. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Yep, I'm in a New York state of mind. They should open up that building and turn it into a um, a shelter for the homeless. Wouldn't that be cool if they turned that building into a homeless shelter? Oh, that would be so cool. Have those have the people living in the uh, great hallway turn that into like individual units with that beautiful pink marble and have all of them going up and down the escalator, move all of the shops out of the building and replace those uh, shops in that mall with um, housing for the homeless, for the migrants and such. I love it. Uh, Adrian Burrow, I love you. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, well, let's get out of here, you guys. It'll be three hours before you know it. We got to stop meeting like this. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. Don't 
Tell me not to fly, I simply got to. If someone takes a spill, it's me and not you. Who told you you're allowed to rain on my parade? It's like butter. Okay. All right. Good night, you guys. Love you all. I will see you. And, of course, our last word of the day is Charitine White joined 23 months ago. <laughs> 23 months membership. Don't forget it. Bitter. Bitter, bitter, bitter. Well, someone's got to say it. Bitter. Bitter, bitter, bitter. Oh, good night, uh, Shells Bells. My shot says, the last thought of the day. Imagine the man who was sent by God, is losing his assets during Holy Week. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for that. If Trump comes up with that money, he has made some shady deals for if he becomes president. Imagine losing an entire uh, building like that. And what is the state of New York going to do with all that gaudy furniture in that apartment of his? Uh, thank you, Cookies and Cream. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for supporting this platform. Um. 53,800 subscribers. So probably by the probably by Thursday maybe we'll have 54,000 and growing. Yeah, Adrian anything that uh Trump uh does, he run it into the ground. I mean, Trump should be president right now, but he messed up the pandemic. He would have had, he would have been of hero status if he had just gotten us through that pandemic. But because Trump always, always depends on slick, he always likes to be slick. And that is what got him in the end. His own personality, his own mindset is what defeated him. He doesn't know how to do things, you know, in a sensible way. He always uh, kind of goes to the darkness. They, I once uh, read that if Donald Trump had taken the money that he arguably tricked his father out of, the money that he uh, swindled from his siblings among other relatives if he had taken that money and put it in the markets in a good you know trustworthy phone, uh, fund he would have almost double the amount of money that he pretends to have in other words because of the way he has always been such a uh, wheeler dealer and um cheating people out of their money and such, that type of approach is the reason why he doesn't have as much as he pretends to have. Now, what a lot of people get confused about, they think that every hotel, every building that has Trump's name on it belongs to Trump, and it does not. Trump is, Trump International is just like the Hyatt or the Hilton, they license their name to individual property owners. So if you open a hotel 
and you make a deal with, say, Hyatt or Marriott or Hilton, they will license, they will kit up the hotel with the towels and the, the bric-a-brac and all the kind of stuff that gives it the appearance of a Hyatt or Hilton or whatever property. Not exactly a McDonald's franchise, but the principle is pretty much the same. And so a hotel overnight could go from being a Hilton to a Hyatt, a Hyatt to a Marriott or whatever. So he's just licensing the name Trump. Trump is a lifestyle. It's not just real estate. It's a lifestyle. Uh, let me see. Aren't the firm like Trump? They are both. Uh, is it deniers? If he's convicted in Georgia, he will do time. Oh, really? He can't vacate the conviction. Oh, that's good. I would love to see a president serving from a jail cell. Seven hundred and fifty is it seven hundred and fifty dollars in taxes? Wow. Yeah, two black women. Two black women. Same as DC. Oh yeah, the, the uh hotel in Washington. The name is licensed, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of liens on those properties. There's other people that invest it. Yeah, I think the uh, hotel in Washington, that was just a lease, wasn't it? He leased the building. I don't think he owned the building outright. That's all he was paying was $750. Wow. Wow. My, my. Oh, okay. Okay, it's that time. I'm finna get off of here. All right, love you guys. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow.
Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Sitting here. <laughs> Oh, that's a jam, ain't it? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, man. That was when music was music. Isn't it amazing how they used to sing about love? Every other song was about love. Love this, love that. Love you, love this, love that. Now... It's the WAP. <laughs> now they just go straight to the WAP. What has this world come to? I mean, they skip all the lyrics, skip dinner, skip the walk in the park. They skip everything. What is this world coming to? What happened to 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 romance? Ain't nobody got time for that. I guess ain't nobody got time for that. They just go straight to the to the to the to the fun parts. That's a shame. Let's put romance back in in into it. Right? Courtship and Whispering sweet nothings and all that. Why is everybody in such a hurry? Oh, well. <clears throat> 500 million in cash? Wow. Okay, good night, y'all. I'm not going to stay. I'm going to go... All right, good night.